I've been wanting to film this today for a while, but I haven't, so I wanted to wait for the dust to settle a little bit because I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings, really, because the thing which triggered this video isn't actually that relevant. I write for F-Stop, as you'll know, and somebody quite some time ago, a couple of years back, they commented on one of my articles explaining why I was wrong about something, linking me to a video from a channel which had a lot of subscribers. Now, this is before I had a YouTube channel at all, but they linked me to this person that these people say this, you're wrong. Unfortunately, this video that had several million views was actually incorrect, um, both in the technical explanation and the application of it. And it kind of brings me through to this thing where it's very difficult being a photographer with the internet. And here's why. There's a real problem with internet photography. There are several reasons why people like myself included, and I absolutely include myself in this problem, have YouTube channels. It is to one, sell, two, receive, and three, make money to some extent. I'm sure there is somebody out there who is completely doing it for just like purely fun or whatever it may be. But if you work as a photographer, everything's a business. This is a business for me. You know, it, it's not a hard business, it's not a big seller, it's not something I actually try to make money out of, but still I have to quantify my time and value my time and make sure that if I'm putting time into this, that I'm receiving something in return for it. Whether that's at the moment I'm learning how to edit video, which is something I've never done before, or in the future, whether it's trying to monetize this in some sort of way to make a, a passive income. I don't know, but there we go. The problem with internet photography is that it is the blind leading the blind. I've watched videos and I learned from YouTube and I learned from the internet. I taught myself photography by using the internet as a resource. And it took me so long to realize that most of what I was reading and most of what I was like listening to and watching was factually incorrect. It was people telling me how to be a commercial photographer who had never been a commercial photographer themselves. They might have done the occasional job, but they had no idea how to deal with art buyers, agents, how to get signed, who to sign with, what the right agent for you is, what the right pricing structure is, how to price. Sales, these people trying to give you sales advice and it's so misguided, but I followed it and I couldn't work out why I wasn't being successful. And it comes down to everything with the internet. When we were at university, the internet was not new, but it was new in the sense of the amount of information out there and Wikipedia was getting very big. And it was made very clear to us as in a science degree and postgraduate degree, that taking information off the internet didn't mean anything. There was no validity to anything on the internet. Anyone can publish anything on the internet. Anything I put on YouTube doesn't have to be checked by anybody to be correct. Anything I say isn't vetted. I've made mistakes and I've said the wrong things and it still stays up there. There's no correction there. Now this brings in a real problem with beginners and even advanced photographers and you know, people like myself who are trying to find information and were being misguided. And also you might have seen my video on the Dunning-Kruger effect where people who know very little think they know a great deal and often the people who are most vocal know the least. I regularly have people going, yes, but you should do it like this. And I'm thinking, well, do you know what? Maybe eight years ago, I might have thought that was a good idea, but I've got a lot more experience now and I know that this is actually the best way to do something. And likewise, when I'm trying to find information, I need to know who to ask and why to ask and what to ask. It's very difficult to try and get all that perfect information at the perfect time in your career with the internet bombarding you with false information. So I've got some tips for you. The first thing to do is review the person you're getting the information from. Who are they? What do they do? What have they achieved? And what is their motive? For example, if someone's trying to sell you a business course, are they trying to make something sound more fancy than it is in order to get you to purchase it? Are they trying to make out some hidden secret to being successful in photography so you buy their workshop? There's no hidden secret. You need good work and you need the right contact. That is it. Is it somebody who's trying to sell you equipment? You know, I get given a lot of free equipment before YouTube and since YouTube, my post box is full all the time with free stuff. Now I'm very careful never to offer something out to people and say this is good when it's not because it's not something that I need. However, I know friends and people who I work with who get a lot of money from endorsements. Obviously they have to say this is an advert, but still there's a lot of money in that. It's also worth noting though that being a good photography teacher, whether that is the business side or the photography side, doesn't actually require any prerequisites to being a successful photographer. And being a successful photographer doesn't mean you're any good at teaching. The two are extremely separate. You can be a bad photographer, but a great teacher. And you can be a great photographer, but an awful teacher. And it's really difficult because of this, trying to find out whose advice you should follow, who you should listen to, and what a good sort of direction to head in. Now I'm gonna try and put some links, some YouTube channels in the description that I think are, are good YouTube channels with good advice. It's not a, you know, 
complete list because I don't really know every YouTuber out there. But if you know of anybody else you think should be included in the list, do pop it down below because I'm going to add it into my Tin House Studios website as like a, a directory of things that I think are good YouTube channels. They have good information. There is the, is it called Fotigi or something like that? He's a, I think he's a Russian chap from the States. He's got a brilliant channel. If you like food photographer, there's the bite shot. If you like the more sort of like commercial side of things, if you like the more commercial side of things, there's Carl Taylor. If you want to talk more about the more emotional side of things and perhaps the more thought-provoking stuff, I think Zacharias or Arius, I should really learn how to pronounce his name properly, has one of the best YouTube channels out there. So this is my views on internet photography and the problems and the sort of plight that comes along with it. Let me know your thoughts now. Let me know who you think is good to listen to. And also, if you're feeling a bit brave, let me know who you think you should really avoid and whose advice is particularly just there to make money and doesn't actually have any validity to it either because they've never achieved it themselves, which I don't think is a necessity, or because it's just factually incorrect, but they've got such a big following that people just, you know, hang on their words and follow it blindly. I hope you enjoyed this sort of video. It's a little bit different to what I normally do, but if you want to see the normal stuff about being a commercial photographer, being a food photographer, and having a pet cat in your studio, do hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time.